Hello, if you're tuning in, this is Carl Turner the Artist, aka CT the Artist, and today I'm doing a Bible session on the topic revolution. So, just to inform you guys, this set the sessions are just to update you guys are uh, parts where I break down. Not just the song, but the reason for the song on the album, mixtape album, just as I know it. Hey, Mandy, good to see that you tuned in. Happy to see you. Um, and I'm just informing you on what's going down, pretty much. Um, I'm breaking down. Is the, the Bible Sessions is basically a 10-part program, pretty much. It's uh, the main 10 or the core 10 songs on the Just As I Know It mixtape, I'm going to break them down biblically. Uh, not just the lyrics, but more of the reasoning behind the lyrics. Hello. And um, I'm going to just go and dive in with that. So with that being said, before I um, start, I want to start it off with a prayer. Um, I usually pray before I even open my Bible so that God can give me revelation on exactly what I'm about to read. So... All right. So, Lord, Lord, I decree in Jesus name. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. God, wisdom is my sister and understanding is my kinswoman. Teach me what I don't know and bring your revelation to what I have and will receive from your word. Allow your words to be my daily bread and satisfy my hungry heart with your presence. Lord, break and destroy every demonic influence in my life that will cause consideration to sin. For to cease from sinning is to show my love for you in obedience the way you desire. God bless me with your grace and mercy as I come before your throne of grace for guidance, peace, and salvation. Equip me with your heavenly protection against my enemies as you build me into your trustworthy vessel. Father, I thank you for considering me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Glad to see you, Eric Randall, tuning in. So we're about to dive in. So... We've done the prayer. So the first part of it is the definition of revolution. Um, the definition that I got here, it says a forcible overthrow of a government or social order in favor of a new system. So me having a biblical perspective on revolution, I look at the, the greatest revolutionary that I know, and that's Jesus Christ, the Lord. So um he came and not only did he overthrow the government or social society orders, he proclaimed humanity in a revolutionary way to where he is the godly example that all Christians, people, humanity should follow and, and a, with the highest living standard. So um, let's go here. All right. So the first line to the intro, the name of the first song is intro, but the theme of it is revolution. So the first line is, this is what it sounds like to be a living revolution. My story, just as I know it, the truth is undisputed. So that opens up the, the idea that the pretty much it opens up the mixtape to what you're about to experience. All right, so we're going to go into the five keywords that are involved in this particular session. So the five keywords to this revolution um, is time, motives, mission, vision, and execution. So time and everything, every section I'm going to go to a scripture that relates to it. So, so um, time being the first, make time for a revolution. So basically plan, plan ahead, plan directly on the time, the necessity to strategize for what you're about to get into. What is it for? What's your motives behind it? So what I'm going to do first, we're going to go to Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Let me find it here. All right. So Luke chapter 14, verse 28, reading between verses 28 and 33. Let's find it here. 28, 23. Okay. So this is Jesus speaking a parable or explaining a parable. It's, and it reads 28. 
For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he has suffice, sufficient to finish it? Whether he has sufficient to finish it? This is the King James Version. Lest happily after he have laid the foundation and it not be able to finish it, all that behold it become to mock, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. He gives another example. Or, What king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet that cometh against him with 20,000? So, right here, he's, he's, he's talking about planning. Planning your time, strategizing about what you're about to get into. So as a Christian revolutionary or a Christian Christian that's trying to do a revolution, what exactly is your purpose, your motive behind it? What are you trying to revolutionize? Uh, is it to be a, a, a Christian individual amongst peers? Are you trying to do entertainment? Uh, is your message pertaining to a, a wide mass of people? Is it just... For changing your home, your marriage, and your your family and school, it, it it's to every uh, wide variety of cultures and things. But uh, so that is the time perspective. You want to plan, strategize, and make sure that you're able to do what you're visioning to move forward with it. So that was time. All right. So the next one is motives. Motives. What's your motive? behind doing it. A lot of people like to do things. Is it for money? Is it for uh, financial gain? Is it for helping people? Is it charity? What's your motive behind it? So the scripture that I want to use to explain motives is going to come from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And I believe this is when God is, this is after the king Saul has fallen and the Lord is trying to find a new king for Israel. And he's sending Samuel to find David. First Samuel 16. Ah, a second. I wanted to put bookmarks in here, but I said, you know what? To kill time, I'll actually look for it with you guys if you're following along. I know it's right here. Yeah, here we go. Samuel uh, chapter 16. Oh, all the way in the end. Okay, here we go. Uh, I think I hot. Did I highlight it? Nope, I didn't. Thought I did. Chapter 16, verse 7, and it reads. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance on, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So here God is implying, because Samuel probably, he, he did get there and he saw David's brothers. And you're like, man, they're tall. These look like strong warriors that could lead Israel as the king. And God has said, look not at the outward appearance. Let's look at the heart. And the heart is really the root of where you'll find the motive of a person's a person's uh, vision, drive, whatever, whatever you want to say. Um, and when he saw David, David was actually tending the sheep, fighting off bears, protecting sheep. And the Lord said, look at this one look at him his heart for some this would seem like you know somebody else's kind of labor that's not really a warrior type of labor but that was exactly the kind of labor god always marvels at somebody that's trying to shepherd lost sheep all right so motive so that's the next key word so motive you want to make sure that you have the right motives about your revolution the right motives about what you want to do the right motives that it it, it is to Help people, not necessarily be for uh, improper gain. Sometimes financial is part of the aspect of it, but it can't be the means to an end. Because if you're only doing something for a financial reason, then once you get the financial purpose of it, you won't be as fulfilled. 
because that was the end of it. As soon as you get money, then that's 